What's up, Mr. G here, and in this video we're going to be going through questions 21 through 30 of the G-Metrics Autodesk Practice Exam number 2. So we're on number 21 here. It says open new floor plan DWG. We're going to click this little folder right here and open up new floor plan. It says open layout 1. So layout 1 is down here. It's paper space. It deals with how to set up your page for printing. And it says edit the page setup so that the plot scale is set to fit to paper. So in order to edit this page, this layout one page, you have to have it selected and then you right click and go to page setup manager, which is right here in the middle. This window is going to pop up that says page setup manager. There's only one layout there, so we're going to click modify to modify it. And under the plot scale right here, we're going to just check this box that says fit to paper and this unit right here will change as I click that. This question is just asking what that unit has been changed to. So I'll type 0 0.03161 and that's it for that question. So I'll close that. This question says open DO2 copy object. So I'll click the folder open up copy objects and the question looks like this copy the object labeled point 45 inches to the right so it wants me to select this object called point you could select that too if you want it doesn't really matter and it wants me to copy the object labeled point 45 inches to the right I already have the answer down here but we're gonna hit the copy tool and then for choosing a base point, you can click right on the plus if you want. I don't like doing that. I like clicking out here most of the time just so I can see the direction of my mouse a little easier. So I'm moving my mouse to the right and I'm going to type 45. And what happens is it takes that and it copies it. 45 units happens to be at this line number four. So that's the question that they were asking is where that point ends up being. So the answer to this question is number four or four. All right, let's close that. Create a new drawing using AutoCAD.DWT. Now that should just be by clicking new drawing, but I'm gonna hit new here. And if you go to the A and then just go to new like I just did, it should default open up into this template folder. And you're just looking for AutoCAD. This is a drawing template file that's already made by AutoCAD. And it just has some units and different things are automatically or already set to it. So maybe they're looking for something specific in that. But anyways, I think you can just click the plus and get the same um, blank drawing here. It says draw a closed polyline starting at point 1010, moving clockwise to create a polygon by typing in all the given points in order below. Now this question doesn't specify whether or not we need absolute coordinates or relative coordinates, which is basically determines whether we turn dynamic input on or off. So I'm going to just keep dynamic input on and see if this works. And if it doesn't, I'll turn dynamic input off. So I'm going to use the polyline tool. I'll click 10 comma 10, enter 15 comma 17. I think this same exact question was on the last test. So 25 comma 18, 28 comma 13, and that shape does not look anything like the one on the picture. So it's not talking about relative coordinates, it wants absolute coordinates, which means we need to turn dynamic input off. Then I'll go to polyline and draw it again. 10 comma 10, 15 comma 17, 25 comma 18, 28 comma 13, and then end it back at that end point there. What is the length of the closed polygon? I'll go to properties here, scroll down. Length is 42.73. Now that question was very familiar, so I feel like they used the exact same one, but maybe I'm crazy. All right, what type of dimension is shown in the image below? They've got a circle and they've got a dimension going at an angle right here. That's the giveaway is that it's at an angle. Yes, it's showing the diameter of the circle, but that's not the type of dimension that that is. Um, if I were to draw a circle here, I'll even make it 2.99, so we're being accurate. 
Um, if I were to use a dimension or a diameter dimension, that would pop up like that. It just looks like a leader line that points directly to the circle. So diameter is out. Radius is out because radius would only be half the distance. So we're looking at aligned and linear. The basic concept here is that linear dimensions can only be horizontal or vertical. They cannot be any other way. Even if you were to measure, even if you were to measure across, kind of like they do in the picture, like that, it will not go at that angle. So your only option left is aligned. Aligned dimensions, and it even kind of gives you the same exact picture and the same orientation on the preview right there. So that is what an aligned dimension can look like. It can go at any different angle. It doesn't have to be horizontal or vertical. It can be either way. Okay, so aligned dimension is the correct answer there. This one says what tool was used to create the transformation shown below. Um, in the previous few questions, uh, I think it was 11 through 20, we talked about chamfer a little bit and fill it. This would be a chamfer. And just to give you an example of what it does, say I have two lines like this. Fill it and chamfer are underneath the same little tool here. We click chamfer. We go to distance down here and set our distances. I'll do two and two and select the two lines and it just kind of cuts the end corner off at a 45 degree angle. So that's chamfer. Which of the following object snap icons is not shown in the image below? So our object snaps can be found, we know to turn it on and off, it's right here, but the options for it are right here. If you go to object snap settings right here at the bottom, it'll give you a nice big picture of what each one of them looks like. So endpoint is a square, midpoint is a triangle, so on and so forth. So the question says, which of the following object snap icons is not shown in the image below? So I'll, I'll look for midpoint. Midpoint is a triangle. And right off the bat, that one is not shown, midpoint. I don't know if it has multiple answers on this one, it does. Oh, I'm actually not sure. Does it just want two answers? Okay, it looks like it's kind of wanting two answers. Let's see here. So midpoint is definitely not on there because there's no triangle. Intersection looks like a X. So that one's also not on there. Don't get intersection confused with insertion. Insertion has those little two boxes that are conjoined together. Node is a circle with an X through it. That one's there. And endpoint we know is a rectangle. So endpoint rectangle, I don't see that on there either. So it's kind of hard for me to see if I have that selected or not. Choose all that apply. Okay, midpoint's not on there because that's triangle. Intersection is an X, that's not on there. So it's these three that are not on there, but I feel like it's gonna mark me incorrect here. Let me try again. Let me, can I refresh? I can't refresh the page. I can deselect them like that. Am I crazy? Midpoint, intersection, endpoint. Next. Connecting two lines. Try again. Which of the following object snap icons is not shown in the image below? Midpoint, for sure, not there, no triangle. Intersection, X, that's an X with a circle in it. That's node, so there is no plain old X. Insertion, is there, right there. Node, is there. Endpoint, it's just a rectangle, it's not there. I'm just gonna say this question's bugged. Maybe I bugged it out by clicking too much, but you should have three answers. Anyway, the point is, look at, look at your object snap settings and look at these in order to see which ones are missing. Okay, after isolating the layer chairs, you discover that one of the chairs is red and the rest are blue. What, you, what should you do to ensure all the other objects on the layer are the same color and stay that way? Okay, after isolating the layer chairs, so I don't have an example drawing or anything here, you discover that one of the chairs is red and the rest are blue. 
So we have a layer that exists somewhere, but things are showing up different colors, red and the rest are blue. What should you do to ensure all the other objects on the layer are the same color and stay that way? Set the color of the red chair to blue in the object properties. Ensure the color of all the object is set to by layer in object properties. I'm thinking that's it. Delete the red chair from the layer and reinsert it and move the red chair to a different layer. Let's see, okay, ensure the color of all objects is set to by layer. So that's the right answer. I don't know how to explain that. Um, I'll try. Let's see. New floor plan. Okay. Let's say I my current layer is A doors. And I insert a block. It should be red. But you can change the color of it by having this not set to buy layer um, let me see it depends how the blocks are set up to be honest um, I'm not really sure I can give a good example of this one because I have it on the correct layer and I went to properties and changed it to blue so it doesn't change to blue I'm not sure on that one I guess I took a wild guess I actually think now that I've done that that this question this answer is wrong because what should you do all the same color and stay that way ensure the color of the objects layer set to by layer yeah this doesn't make sense anyway but that's right there's not going to be any question that's like this on the AutoCAD exam that you're practicing for um, they need to update stuff like this on the geometric stuff all right Consider the image below. Assuming each square is one unit, what coordinates could you enter to copy circle one to the location of circle two? So if we're here, we got X and Y, X comes first and then Y, so it goes over one, two, three, four, and then down one, two, three, four, five. So we're looking for four, five. Um, at four five because that the at symbol means it's that should be from there to there let's check that at symbol I'll just draw it maybe okay if I draw let's do this I don't know if I can get a good explanation here of at versus the pound. Um, okay. If I'm drawing a line and I start it at zero, zero, and then I type at five comma five, it goes there. If I type at five comma five again, so at is relative. So at four, five, that one should be correct. And then if this is zero, zero, I don't know how any of these other ones could be correct because one, two, three, because let's see what we get when we just hit next here. It's going to say uh, incorrect because there's probably multiple answers. Try again. At negative five, four. Oh, okay. So that would mean we go this way. That's our X. That one's definitely wrong because at negative five would go that way. Um, pound two, two. One, two negative two I feel like they're gonna say this is the right answer but it's saying you're copying the circle so if you're copying a circle let's see if I have a circle right here let's say I go to two comma two so two comma two is right here if I'm copying this circle and I grab it from there and I do pound two comma two it does put it there so that is right so the pound sign means it's the absolute coordinate of the thing. So I guess it doesn't matter where you're picking the circle up, which I just learned that. You could put this here. Since it's counting this as 0, 0, it doesn't mention that, but that's 0, 0. So since this is 2, negative 2, it would go x over 2 and then down negative 2. So that would be a correct answer also. And I'm getting this bug again where it's not selecting that. I don't know. I don't know how to refresh this. This refreshes the data files. I don't think it refreshes the question. 
I could go back and then forward maybe and do that, that, I don't know, I'm getting, I know there's multi, there we go, okay, let's see, and that's correct. Okay, so I was just looking for those two answers. So at is relative and the pound sign is absolute. Sorry, I sometimes get those confused and mixed up. I know how they work, I just forget which one's which sometimes. Okay, which keyboard shortcut can be used to quickly activate ortho mode when drawing a line or shape? So whenever you're drawing a line or shape, ortho mode is this. I hit F8 because that's what it says down there. F8 will easily activate ortho mode. Um, let's try these though. Shift, tapping shift, that is not, oh, that's that kind of activated it. Does that work? Learned that today. Hold shift. You still got to get it close. Like if I tap shift right here, eh, I guess shift is the answer. Cool. Which icon in the image below would be used to add a new layer to the drawing? So that's under layer properties here. In order to create a new layer, if you just hover over it, it'll say new layer right there. So that would be number two, option two. And you can see as I click it, it adds more layers. Option two is the answer there. All right, sorry we had some hiccups along the way, but uh, sometimes that's how it goes, you know? Hopefully you learned something, and we'll see you next time.